Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scene tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Lance Psycho, my name is Al Gore. We made it. We made it. Last time we were on this podcast it was probably two it was probably two weeks ago. Yeah, we skipped an episode. Because we had to call our dads down. We had to call the dads in. Because the unit flooded. Yep. And a whole bunch of things happened where the fire marshals didn't even think we'd be done on time. And on what day was it? Monday. Monday. Let's get this so we write it down because this is going to be part of the book. Monday, November 18th. Fire came. Inspectors came. Excuse me. Monday, November 25th because that's how long my week has been. Because on November 25th, we passed. And that evening, I jumped on a plane went and salvaged my Thanksgiving with my family in Mexico, and it's Friday the 29th, and I'm back here with you. Yep, and you're more happy that you're back here with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I am happy that we finally have an office again that I have a desk at. We're sitting in the new office. We're sitting in the new office in this sick table. It is so sick. This table is... Tell what is it made of? One, two, three, four, five, six, six LVLs that are 11 and 7 eighths wide, three and a half inches tall and 10 feet long. It is like the coolest. We had the, the welders to get the base in. It's a custom base that we had one of our one of our designers uh, design. They couldn't get it upstairs, so they had to cut it in three pieces, bring it upstairs. I what? had to call the alarm people to turn off the alarm so that it wouldn't go off. Yeah, I, I was wondering if you were going to do that, yeah. And uh, so that I came back, and that was probably one of the best surprises so far coming back was seeing this. It's a sick table. It's just awesome. We're gonna put glass on top of it. It looks super industrial. Yep. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that, and I'm happy we we happy we closed, and we got to we got past two two units TCO'd. People who don't know what that means is temporary construct con, occup techy techy temporary <laughs> occupancy, and uh, Al got it to be full occupancy with a few tweaks quickly. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. So essentially, uh, the building inspector came in. He checked all. Uh, all the water, all the outlets, um, check all rooms, looked around a lot of stuff, passed all that. The fire alarm people set off the fire alarms, checked in all to make sure that they were Monday all going was, off. It was just madness. Lance was, there was a couple things like some rails didn't have a return. So then Lance was, would run and do that. In dress clothes. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering why you wore dress clothes. Cause I, I didn't want, I was just like, I'm tired of being construction Lance. Yeah. I get tired. I mean, honestly, that was. <sighs> I just want to be an architect again. <laughs> yep, yep. It was way easier just being an architect. I'm oh, serious. Oh, it's way easier. Jesus. Should, time out. We started this podcast because we wanted people to know the process of architect as developers. It is way easier being an architect. Just way easier. I, I can't. Way easier. Yeah. I, th I think you learn more than anything ever if you if you try to do all three. But, I don't. you know, at the end of the day, it's just like you get away. Like, are you really... Are you trying to have? Are you trying to have a family? Are you trying to have a life? Are you trying to sleep? Are you trying to eat? Are you trying to maintain your regular weight? I got down. I'm normally a 185, 6'1", 185, still slim, and I got down to 172. That's way too. Yeah, it's insane. Here, here's a question. I wonder if the viewers would like this, but I wonder if it'd be a waste of time if we went through and not right now, but talked about the construction order. Because like some lessons that we learned was we piled too much on top and we shrunk the time frame too much. The somehow we needed to extend the time frame but still keep people on deadline. Because there was no way that the week before Monday, there were some times when we had twenty to thirty people out here. And it's because guys, this is getting done, send out your crews, get things, you know. And without that, that doesn't happen. But my question is, there's a lot of times this becomes before this, then you do this. Like, should we, is it worth it to go over that and to type that all out? Yeah, well, I think it is. <clears throat> I think it is a hundred percent. Cause he, cause even as, so we, I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever do another development. I, I really think about it a lot. I think about how hard, I think about how hard it is 
the worst part about it was that just that is if everybody knows that like the last episode was one thirty eight. If you listen to that one, it was don't go chasing waterfalls. We lo- we literally lost a unit, and that unit has really thrown a wrench in our lives. Like after we after we get out of this mess, we'll try to unwind and explain it all because I think it's beneficial, especially when you're because we're dealing with insurance. So I think there's some lessons learned to be there. Uh, there, but then also with the bank and like, it just gets so tricky. Um, with all the, we still owe people money. Uh, but as a contractor, definitely as people who are still moving ahead and trying to do, and going to, and going to be building buildings and hopefully one is going to be starting soon should, should go way easier than this $2.5 million debacle. Um, way easier. I got my preferred subs. I know subs I'm not hiring whatsoever. I'm just not. Like, you are not allowed on the job site. You just, I don't even want to see you again. Yep. Um, one of the agents but, for one of the other units listens to our podcast. And, and she goes, she goes, I really. What? Yeah. 101. The, the agent. She goes, I really loved your last episode, Don't Go Chasing water, Waterfalls. I was on pins and needle. I'm sure it was, like, terrible for you, but it was, a gr- like, it was like a gripping, gripping story. So you're welcome, everybody, for us <laughs> risking our entire professional, personal, and financial lives and for the great stories. For the great stories. <laughs> you know, I was talking to my wife on the plane for about an hour uh, on the way back from Mexico. When, when we weren't sleeping, I mean, we were just all, everybody was tired. So I was talking to her. And I, was just, I was just complaining. And yep. I was just like, I just want you to just let me complain. I'm not, I don't want any solutions. Just hear me complain, wife. I need, I need to complain. So I was just complaining about the whole thing and how bad 111 sucks. She should have kept giving you solutions and be like, do you see how we feel now? Well, <laughs> what she couldn't hold back from. I know exactly because that's all I do. She, what she couldn't hold back from is she goes like, she goes, Lance, everybody who isn't as close to this project as you, as I am to you. I know what your guys' numbers are. I know what the sales prices are. I know how much you work. I know how little you are that you're home. So does Alex's wife. Anybody who is really close to you guys and really gets, even the, the guys at the firm, the guys at the firm were all, uh, not as devastated as we were when one eleven went down, but no. I mean, they, everybody, and nobody was happy that day. She goes, everybody else, they, they think you're heroes. They look at you guys and they see the pictures and they see the Facebook posts and all that stuff and they think like, wow, these guys are, I wish I was these guys. And I'm like, you don't, you don't wish it. You don't, you don't wish it. So we came so close to complete and utter devastation, and and we're still on the fence. But we oh think my we god, have- no, no, we're still on the fence. We're st- Alex and I <laughs> spent three to four hours today up here, just going just me numbers. and him going through numbers. I brought all of the what what we still owe people, how much money we have left to draw. Then our you know nobody's working but Alex and I today because we had we had three showings and I want to talk about those too, um, like final walkthroughs with buyers which is interesting and a whole different experience. But going through all those numbers and going like, at first we were elated. We were like, oh, wow, this is going to work out okay. And then our, we started talking to our banker and he's like, oh, no, no, you owe this much. We're like, what? And we started digging through the numbers and then we almost had a heart attack again. And now now we're kind of like, now we're, I would say we're back on the fence of just, all right, I think if X, Y. devastated. We're like, oh, this kind of broke even. <laughs> If the, the the bottom line is if we if we would have been able to sell all of them at once, oh, just a way better happy ending, way better happy ending. Yep. Now it's just kind of it's just kind of a mediocre ending to a, a just a lot of work, a lot of work. And I guess we have stories and experience, and some buyers don't hate us. The last lady literally loves us. Like she was just she. I'm, I could tell she almost wanted to hug us because she walked through her unit and was just like, she was literally jumping around. And I was joy. like, I was like, you should be, because these are. That's what Al, Al gave me. Al like cheers me. He's drinking a club soda, yep. or uh, some kind of soda, and uh, I'm having a beer. And he's like, I was like, what are you we cheers him for? He's like, we made a good product. I'm like we, we did. did, we did make, we did make beautiful architecture. We did make a literal neighborhood. We did make eight houses for people, two offices essentially. That are awesome. Even if they're sick, some- they're literally sick. Yep. So, you wanted to talk about the walkthroughs. Yeah. So, the walkthroughs. Uh, 
keep your mouth shut. <laughs> here, 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 this is honestly one big tip. Like, so you're gonna if you ever if you ever do what we did, which is insane. You try to do a development. I don't care how big or small it is. Maybe it's just one house. Yep. You make sure it's nice and clean, and you're gonna walk through. You're gonna have tape. If anybody's ever built a house, you have a piece of tape. You have you're gonna number it, and you're gonna take pictures. And each little item artifact that they don't like or whatever. But remember, these people haven't had their nose right up to the drywall every single day. So they're going to have a different perspective. And I'm not saying don't say anything because you're trying to get away with stuff. Just don't say stuff because it might not bug them. They might actually think that's a great design solution when you thought like, I don't like that. And they were just like, a toilet. We got a compliment on a toilet today. Of all things, this lady goes, she's, this lady was awesome. And she was like, I really like how round this toilet is. Like, is this extra wide toilet? And I'm like, I, I have no clue. I don't know. It's a, it's a mid-grade toilet. It's, you know, yep. work. <laughs> the, the other thing besides the advice of, you know, space it out, make sure you have enough people for the scope of the project meaning enough management and oversight and, and stuff like that. So it, it, you know, it can be done. But then also this other walkthrough. So the last walkthrough that Lance talked about, I think we had 27 little uh, pieces of tape. Yeah, 20 most, 20 something, not bad. Most of them were little paint things. Really, really minor stuff. Like I think it was actually, but like, we end up on 24, 24 little tiny things. That, I mean, that you I just mean, roll over. Oh, I mean so tiny that like, it's going to take me, if I end up doing it, an hour or two. That's it. Oh, yeah. All I'm going to do is get a sanding block and paint. But the other one that has 87, that's probably going to be your whole Saturday, honestly. Right? Don't you think it'll take you a... There's a lot on that one. And that one did have more. Like, there's like kind of... That one admittedly whole... had more. That one did end up just, just not as good as another one. I don't know. And either it just ended up with a client that was too picky... Or if I could go back in time, we knew that this client was going to be picky. They admitted it. I would have, I would have said four months ago, if I could talk to myself, Marilyn, let's see if we can get another buyer for this. And I know because someone else was saying we have backup buyers. So talk to them and, and, and I, I don't know, but legally crush the deal then yeah. legally crush the deal. Yeah. And that's what we said a long time ago. Like, I wish we could test. If, if some of these buyers were going to be too nitpicky and we knew it, we just didn't have the, the resources because we are too, we overstretched ourselves. We overstretched ourselves. We were too, we've talked about the business cycle a couple of times in this podcast. You know, it's real. There's something called the business cycle. It has to do with how much money's printed and how it has to do with a boom and bust cycle. And like, some people think we're at the end of it, and some people think we got a couple more years. And I think we're at the end of it. I think we're ready for a little bit of a crash. And the agent that's listening to this, it's not your client. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely She's not great. your client. She's great. Uh, no lie on that one. Um, so, man. It's been rough, man. It has been rough. It has been rough. I thought, I thought you know, it did. I guess losing that whole unit really didn't... Uh, that didn't hit me until we started looking at what it was. It didn't hit me. Be, it didn't hit me, and I don't think it would hit you in the same way either, because we were so focused on we have to pass Monday. Like there's no choice. Like we we have to pass final inspections Monday, and so we were just running right at it as fast as possible and just going. And then, you know, you, like we still had to deal with insurance. We're still having to get bids from from people like that. So now finally that we've passed, we've had some time to take a look at like, what is it going to take? What is it going to take to pay off this construction loan? What is left over to eat afterwards? Uh, Because there's bills, there's just, there's bonuses, all kinds of stuff. And then once we started looking at that, then it was like, oh, wow, this really sucks. This really sucks because now we can't, it just would have, I don't even know if we would have had to have the conversation we had to have today. I don't think we would have had to meet for two to four hours today. No. Not at all. We would have just... Been doing other work. Doing other work. Uh, maybe cleaning up around this sort of half put together office that we're sitting in now. 
That's going to be awesome. So if you're ever in Longmont, oh, you got to come look at it. You got I'm so proud of this table. Seriously. This is the this is the best table of all time. <laughs> it's so big. It's that. just huge. So, uh, okay, any other parting thoughts about this development before we move on to the next segment? I'm I'm sure we'll be wrap careful. Up. I don't know. Maybe don't do it. <laughs> like I want to I'm I've been trying to figure out Look, if we get, if we, if we, I, I think we're going to be okay. I think we've got, we will be, we are, know, we will be, we've I got, know. we've got some maneuvers. We've got some maneuvers figured out. It's going to be fine. It's all going to be good, but, uh, it's really hard to see that. Like it's hard, it's hard to just swallow the whole thing and go and like, I mean, I'm just trying to see the value in, in all of that. I don't know. It was so easy to see the value in taking out a $50,000 loan building a tiny house, getting on HGTV, getting all that advertisement, then getting so much advertisement that Subaru hired us, and then we made a we made a very a very good chunk of change, chunk of chunk of change. Catapulted the firm to be able to buy this piece of land, but I'm struggling to see the next step. The next step beyond beyond having a really cool building with a giant shop that we have all kinds of room in to store tools and and uh you know, supplies for other buildings and you know stuff. What? This is one of. I'm one just. Of the, I don't know. One of the guys. Th- this probably isn't isn't true because there's a lot of big firms in Colorado. But one of our guys walked up. No, one of the. You know, one of the guys that we hired that are are kind of your your boys. They said you're gonna have the coolest architecture office in Colorado, and I know there's bigger firms that have like huge things, but for like a medium or small size firm, it's it's pretty cool. And then here's the other thing too. Everyone says. Has, you, Gresh hasn't been here yet, has he? No. Everyone says you learn so much from your failures, and your you know like your failures are. I, I think it's what you learn from. Right. I'm not sure you learn from successes. So, I mean, I I don't know when it's going to come in handy. But if someone asked me the question like, "What was your biggest failure?" I could go through all the points of 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 this. And I and I'm not even saying that this was a total failure because we got an office, we made a little neighborhood, we got great units, all that other stuff. Maybe we'll we get- we did we did we did we got a great office with literal equity in it. Yep. And like now we own commercial real estate plus our houses. Yep. And and we will eventually make some kind of money. Yep. After selling that last unit, and plus launching launching a construction for another construction you know, company, a literal company. But and then also let's say uh, a project come that some people might think is too big for our britches, but they come to our office and somehow, hey, who built this? Not just this, all of this. Oh, we did. That's how often can can you say? And that? and I do think we have we have built a really good relationship with Longmont Fire and Longmont Building Department and yep. Long, and Longmont Building Inspections. I think they. I think they believe we don't try to fool fast ones. I think they think they they think we try to do the right thing. Yep. And and we're not we're not jerks. Yep. And that we're pleasant to be around. I think that that was that that's got to count for something. Yep. That's got to count for something. Yep. I don't know. It's just hard to see. I I, the, 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 I try to give our I try to give us the benefit of the doubt. Like I don't know. You guys are only thirty four and thirty six. You guys have done that's a lot for thirty four and thirty six, isn't it? Remember Jerry and how much money he put into that giant multi-million dollar house and then never, didn't he get it out for like six, five, seven years? Yeah. You know what else? I even thought of like, you know what I need to do? I thought, I thought of this on, my wife was like, you know what you need to do? She's like, you're, you listen, you listen to a lot of books. You need to find books that are just about failures. So you just realize that like, hey, you're not the only one who's made oh, a, a crazy decision. Like Trump, Trump went bankrupt. Well, the, the other thing too, when when the CEO of Disney literally thinks that he's having a heart attack and his chest is like caving in on him because of all the pressure, I'm like, oh, so it's more than <laughs> it's more than just me. <laughs> it, it's more than just me. <laughs> that, okay, <laughs> you know he's successful. You, you think these people just walk through um, the the venture capitalists of a a thirteen Z. Like was saying the same thing when his company was almost going bankrupt because someone asked him, and I said this before, you know, how did you get through all this? And he's like, not well. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't pleasant. (laughs) Did it go smoothly? (laughs) No, no, no. So 
there's like this starry eyed. I need to read Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography. It's just, I actually need to listen to it. But I'm, you know, like everyone sees these people like, oh, yeah, it would be awesome to be Arnold. Yeah. Did you live, lift for like 12 hours straight for like eight years? I know. And I, th- I th- yeah, I and think live in cars. I know. I th- exactly. Exactly. Living in cars. Right. So I think about like I, I, I like comedians. Right. I yeah, live in cars. I, I mean, I did not like Bill Dude, Burr. Jerry Seinfeld comedian cars with coffee. He only has cars. That's why he's doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. To this day. Bill Burr. Uh, He's very he he's very vocal about the fact that he slept on a futon in New York City for like almost a decade, oh and was man, just that's a, a long time. just a pile of shit. Yeah, and and now he's like now he's very rich, a rich pile of shit. Yeah, he's a rich pile of redhead shit. <laughs> um, I know that that's that's the perspective I'm trying to have on the whole thing. Is like I'm trying I'm trying to have a forty thousand foot perspective, but holy cow, is it tough right now? It's tough. It's it's just and I honestly here's the other thing Al I I on I really don't like this time of the year I'm I'm not a fan of like eh, it's dark winter eh, it's winter yeah. it's gloomy well, holidays holidays are not my favorite thing because I'm such a workaholic that I'm just like I don't know why can't you guys be working too I can't get anything done if you're not working what are you doing I agree with that <laughs> I agree with that a hundred percent the only thing I did enjoy like I did get one day off for Thanksgiving and Atlas and I uh. <clears throat> There was a monster attacking us. So we Oh, have of course. Got to got to get rid of that guy. Listen to this. We had to run into the pantry away from the monster and we shut the door. And guess what? He was in there oh, also. Oh no. So then we had to run another blanket. And the monster was also there <laughs> all day. <laughs> Everywhere we went, Non-stop. that monster was there. So let's change the subject. So that guy that I was talking about that venture capitalist, Ben Horowitz, he wrote in the 1990s, he wrote an article that went viral. It's called Good Project Manager, Bad Project Manager. And I read that and then said, oh, maybe I, I should write for our firm, Good Architect, Bad Architect. So in the morning yesterday, I was just typing this out before the monster came. I was typing this out on the couch. So this is just a draft. I'm going to read it to you. And I think it needs to be expanded, expanded and, missing, and it's missing a lot. But here we go. <coughs> Good architects know the scope and process of the project. They clearly lay out who is involved and what entities they need approval from. Bad architects make excuses for poor design. They blame the client, the city, or the engineers. Bad architects push their own agenda instead of having empathy for the client's wishes and the ability to communicate better solutions. Good architects manage their time and their team's time as it relates to the phase that they're in. They work efficiently. They seek out solutions. They are not afraid to ask or call for uh, for answers. They manage the slowest leg, i.e. the civil, structural, etc., and give them information uh, and drawings they need. Good architects meet or beat the deadlines. Bad architects do the wrong things first. They waste time on unimportant details. Bad architects don't communicate quickly, don't bill on time, and make excuses. Oh, don't bill on time. Good architects perform... um, after project reviews, they work to improve the process. They create new tools, features, or trainings. They help their peers willingly. Good architects know their stuff. They study code. They understand the basics of construction, uh, of other construction disciplines. They know material properties, building costs, construction. Uh, they cultivate good resources and relationships and grow their knowledge. An architect can perform basic wall, floors, beams, and column calcs. They take on more responsibility, leading to more reward. They create through their hard work, talent, and dedication, great reviews from clients and the people they work with. They improve on past mistakes. They help the clients, contractors, city, and the profession create a better world to live in. I like that a lot. That was good. How many words is that? Do you have any idea? 500? Mm -hmm. Maybe that sounds less, like an article. Yeah. Nah, that seems like about five hundred. That was a solid article. Yeah. That's cool. I should do a. I should do a good contractor, bad contractor, good developer, bad developer one. You should just a good develop, good entrepreneur, bad entrepreneur. But That's we should great. space them out. We'll space them out. Those are great. Yeah. Yeah. Where would we publish them? Just inside the firm, probably, huh? Is there a good, blog part? Goodbad.com. Wow. That's what he's doing. <laughs> good. To see if it. <laughs> can we get it? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't go out for a while. Yeah. I'll look. 
Um, while we're looking, do we want to listen? Hey, I also want to thank Nick for coming out. Nick heard our call. He came out. You know how many, how many things he did? He was in the walls. Eat, do? <laughs> he was in the floors. I heard him. So he was here. All right. Let's hear what he has to say. Hello, best friends. Hello, best friends, dads. I know the week you're having all too well. Fight on, brothers. The end is in sight. A reading. Where does this switch come from? The overdrive. The berserker mode. The full-on destroyer that will not stop. I think this is something that is learned. And it's a hard lesson. And not everyone gets it. And it's an important lesson. A critical one. It is the thing that allows you to go the extra distance, to dig a little deeper, to push a little harder, to get after it. And it actually takes two opposing forces to bring it to life. It takes both emotion and logic to reach your maximum potential, to really give everything you have to go beyond your limits. Because emotion and logic will both reach their limitations. And when one fails, you need to rely on the other. When it just doesn't make any logical sense to go on, that's when you use your emotion, your anger, your frustration, your fear to push further, to push you to say one thing. I don't stop. When your feelings are screaming that you've had enough, When you think you're going to break emotionally, override that emotion with concrete logic and willpower that says one thing. I don't stop. Fight weak emotions with the power of logic. Fight the weakness of logic with the power of emotion. And in the balance of those two, you will find the strength and tenacity and the guts to say to yourself, I don't. Don't stop. Jocko. Al. Lance. Are you running on emotion or logic at this point? Finish strong, fellas. Well, we did, Nick. We did finish strong. I didn't finish weak. I felt like we finished strong. That was good. You know, like, because I remember, like, I just jumped right on those last tasks. I f- kind of felt like Superman when I was doing it. I'm serious. There's been some days where on this on this job site, Jesus was the carpenter, right? Yep. And I've been saying this over and over again. Like, is, was Jesus a framing carpenter or was Jesus a finished carpenter? Jesus was a finished carpenter, in my opinion. And there's a there, you get to a certain point when you're working that much and you're working with tools and you're in tune with them and you're in tu- you're tuned with the materials... It, it it gets to that woo woo level where you feel unstoppable, and it did, it did feel that way on Monday. It did scare me the next day when I was in Mexico, and I'm texting you, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? And I was just this, like that. I was like, oh god, but he, it's gonna happen. He's gonna work. It's so, awesome. And then and then it did work, and I was like, oh, thank God. Just so there was a couple things that I had to do, like Lance was doing the other day. So like I run around really quick, get them done, walk into the this office, you know, our new office, and literally the building inspector comes in, and I just go, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> Calm, just a cool cat, just like just the coolest cat ever. I uh, got done a second before he opened the door. Um, but you know what? Like, what is if you don't? I guess that's the other thing I try to think about too. Is like. We had an employee quit earlier this year, and Alex and I kind of came to the conclusion that we think it was just because this person could not handle pressure, and I, I think that's what it was too. I think, I think, I think maybe we threw too much pressure at them at their this early in a career, or whatever. But like, if there is if there is a quick silver lining, I think it's like I don't know. I feel like Al and I can handle some pressure. I feel like we can. Our bodies have been tested. Literally, our hearts have been tested. Like, and I'm not joking. I mean, from like a heart attack standpoint. I was sick those last three days. I don't even know that. I was just like, I was sick. Mm-hmm. Like, and I got to the ocean. When I got to the ocean, I swam in it. And 
a little bit of sea salt water, you know, always goes up your nose and everything, but I like snorted it out and it the just, ocean took your sickness. It took it away. That, I'm hey, not it joking. Can, it can I got, handle it. If I don't, I, it can handle it. It's powerful. You know, it's yeah. scary. It's powerful. Power, it powerful thing. Me. So if that's, if that's, if that's one thing that is kind of coming out of the whole thing is like, I don't know. I, I feel like we can handle some pressure. I feel like we can really handle some pressure. The other thing too is like, if you're running a job site, either you or someone else has to be check work guy. Check work guy. And you should almost like make a t-shirt or, or get your vest that says check work guy so that when you're being an, an a-hole to people saying like, oh, this isn't plum or this isn't straight or this window isn't right. They'll be like, ah, oh, come on. Be like, I'm sorry. My jacket literally says check, check work, work guy. guy. Like that's all I do. That's what you do. So I have to do that. Maybe I should get that, even if it's not someone else, just to put that on. So they'll be like, come on. I'll be like, the jacket's on. I'm check work guy right now. There's nothing I can do about it. This does not fly. It does not fly at all. Alter ego. I like it. You know, Kobe Bryant has an alter ego. He, he calls it, I'm going to butcher it, but like Matumbo. He has some, <laughs> it's literally a weird name like that. Okay, keep going. I, I keep <laughs> I, going. I you can I Google it. Yeah, yeah. Kobe. Kobe's alter ego. And he goes, when I get on the court, I'm this other guy. I don't care about anything but destroying. Black Mamba. There you go. He retard. You should have known that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so check work guy. So have an alter ego called check work guy. Well, yeah. I mean, I was definitely contractor Lance on that for sure. Just not putting up with crap. I don't know. Man, what a tough one. We're so close. We start closing units next week. Hey. Which is exciting. You know what we forgot to do? What did we forget? We forgot our sponsors. Oh my gosh. Are you going to post this today? No, I'll post it, post it tomorrow. Okay. But either way, so Black Friday, reverse time and go to Dell. I'm not even reading. I'm going to post it. I'll, I might post it tonight. It's Friday. Yeah. It is Friday, isn't it? It is Holy Friday. Cow. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, my, my time is just all screwed up right now. Honestly, the deals that you can get today at Dell, I'm sure they sent us some sort of reading. Too late, Dell. Doesn't matter. But everyone you, knows. Yeah. Everyone knows to go to Dell.com, get your stuff. And then also, if you miss it, you wanna, well, you want what you want to do is you want to go to number one. Here's what you're gonna do, okay? Inside the firm, listeners, they can save big. Al, I don't know if you know that. They, that's what you're talking about. They can save big uh, during Dell's pre Black Friday no, deals. But it's already Friday, dude. It's already Friday though. <laughs> so just so just go number one, go to dell.com slash forward slash inside the firm. Access your member coupon. Number two, shop Black Friday deals on dell.com forward slash en dot dash us dash workshop deals. Uh, or, or you can call the Small Business Advisor for any questions, 1-800-757-8442. Go check that out. Get And, and here's another thing. If you buy your uh, Dell stuff, remember, taxes are coming. Some of this becomes write-off. So spend your money. Get some cool stuff because the deals are happening on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. The other place you can go, they have actually the best deal, Arcat, because it's free. So go to ArtCat, get your BIM models, get your specifications, try out their uh, what their charrette, which is basically like their Pinterest. Um, give them a go, especially if if you're if you're workaholic and your family's making you take some time off. Chill on your on your laptop. Go check out ArtCat. You'll be doing two things at once. Do your thing, yeah. Check out both those people. Al, any parting words? Is that it for the day? I think we did 30 minutes. That's all we got to do. I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed all of you. Oh, uh, if if you have a break, if you're a student, or let's say you take like a week off around Christmas and you want to learn Revit, if you are an architect and don't know Revit, Arca uh, what's, what's that other one? Archicad. Ar Archicad. Archicad. All right, you get a you get a low pass. <laughs> low. You like okay? I won't harass you because you're doing it. SketchUp, you get a question your decisions. Um, I know that they're making some tools, but I don't know. If you're you, anything but those, you get a fail. If you're not using those two, you get a fail and you must learn Revit. And if, if there was a place where you could learn it called Revit Rocket Ship, maybe you should go there. RevitRocketShip.com. If you're a student, send me your email. I'll send you a discount code. Get it done. You're going to want to learn from us because we teach other professionals. We teach our own firms and we teach students and people actually love it. I don't have time to sugarcoat this. People love it. People Get love it. it. It was spotted in the wild by Adam Mayberry. 
Yeah. The Revit rocket ship template. I loved it. <laughs> you took a picture it in of the Entree Architect community. So, yeah, fantastic. Uh, my parting words are keep your head up. Everybody goes through trials and tribulations. There's there's some reason for them. There is. There has to be. You have to uh you have to uh you have to get through them. What doesn't kill you really does make you stronger, right? I mean, if you're tested once really, really hard, everything else, I don't know, maybe it's easy after that. Yep. And be a good architect, not a bad architect. There you go. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.